Good evening, everyone. This is Pastor Anthony here with your Daily Excellence. I'm glad that you guys are able to be with us this evening. And uh, we're going to kind of just get into it this evening because there's a lot that is going on and there's a lot that we need to talk about. Uh, This is going to be a very active week coming up starting uh, well probably tomorrow um, for some of you especially if you're on the Pacific Rim uh, we we have got a very high probability almost a hundred percent certainty uh, actually of some massive earthquakes volcanic eruptions that are going to take place over the next several days uh, also we've got a very uh, significant storm that's going to be affecting the central portions of uh, of the United States coming up in the next uh, day or two as well. A very uh, vigorous storm that will be coming down. We talked about this last Tuesday, that we would be talking about this this week, and the models have not changed a whole lot, uh, although the storm system may be digging a little further south than I previously thought, but we are going to be in for a very uh, significant tornado event across the United States and a significant earthquake event and a significant volcano event, uh, especially if you live around the Pacific Rim, uh, anywhere in those regions. And so why are we talking about all this? Well, let's start uh, real quick on why we're looking at potentially having uh, earthquakes and volcanoes coming up real soon. And this has to do with this. We're, this is at spaceweather.com. And we are going to just get started here. And I don't normally go to spaceweather.com, not on the channel anyway, just because there's a lot of other channels that kind of deal with the sun and the CMEs and all kinds of other things. It's pretty well a saturated field, uh, so to speak, here on um, YouTube. But because it kind of goes goes aligned with what we're going to be having, we are going to do this right now. And so space weather right now, of course, our solar speeds at 100 and... Uh, or I'm sorry, at 100. It's at 411 um, miles per hour. This is actually in millions of miles per hour, by the way. It's like 411 million miles per hour uh, hitting the Earth. The density of this, by the way, is at 7.8, uh, which is pretty pretty moderate right now, but that's going to climb. Uh, we have X-class uh, solar flares that should be here in the next six hours. That's as of... Um, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So six hours from now will be right around 7.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is going to be coming in this afternoon, uh, it looks like. And then the next 24 hours, we have a M2 class system that will be coming in uh, this time tomorrow uh, as well. And we have more than that coming up. As you can see right now, we have Geomagnetic Storm Watch, G2 class, moderately uh, strong G2 class, uh, geomagnetic storms are possible on m- March 31st when the CME is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field during such storms. Uh, naked eye auroras can descend into the United uh, into the United States as far south as New York, Idaho geographic line. And in fact, the storm might be stronger than predicted. The source of the CME active sunspot AR2975 was just one or two more CMEs right behind it. Uh, details, you can click here on uh, the Aurora updates. You can go onto this website and get text messages if there's Auroras in your area. If you will go over here, and I'm not too sure why my mouse is not popping up on the recording. It's not. But if you go in here, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different sunspots right now, and they are all very active. Uh, and then we get another headline here. It says multiple CMEs are heading for Earth. Sunspot AR2975, uh, let's see, has been busy since yesterday. It has exploded more than 17 times. 11 six class, I'm sorry, 11 C class flares plus 6 M class. This is additional, by the way, uh, to what we saw yesterday. So this isn't including what we saw yesterday. This is additional. Uh, the, erup- the eruptions have hurtled at least two, possibly three CMEs towards Earth. And so you can uh, kind of click on the image here. And I'm not too sure if it's going to do anything for us. Uh, sometimes it might give us a little video here. And as you can see in the video, these are the 
sunspots exploding one after the other. You can see that real time. This is uh, yesterday on the 28th. Actually, this is while we were sleeping yesterday. Uh, all the plasma getting shot off into the atmosphere. And so that is what was taking place. And just one after the other, just not stopping. This apparently happened uh, 17 times. And so clear this screen out. And uh, yeah. So we have a lot going on in the uh, space department here. And this is something that we kind of wanted to keep everyone up to date on. It's the first CME. Uh, took place at 1254 Universal Time and has already been modified by by NASA and the NOAA. Uh, it is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field on March 31st, the second CME uh, at 2130 Universal Time and the predicted third CME at 2230 Universal Time are following close behind. They are likely to arrive on April 1st. Their combined impact could spark G2 to G3 class geomedic storms, all right? So this is going to be a significant uh, issue. Reports are that we've already seen um, uh, radio blackouts in uh, like places like Africa and other places uh, on that side of the globe. And so, uh, you know, Things are already taking place with that. And so this is why we're going to be seeing a lot of earthquakes. We're going to be seeing a lot of volcanic action over the next several days, especially as we get into the 31st and April 1st. And no, this is no April Fool's joke, unfortunately. While that's happening, we're going to be dealing with some issues uh, with our climate. We're going to be dealing with some issues with a significant uh, tornado outbreak uh, happening nearly about the same time as these CMEs come in. And there's kind of a theory in this, uh, and we've heard some people kind of talk about this in the meteorological field, that when we get CMEs um, or any, th any disturbances that enter our Earth's atmosphere while a storm is in progress, that it actually can add to the intensity uh, of that storm. And so it's very possible um, if this is a true statement and if the science is, is, is to be proven on this, uh, it is very possible as this storm uh, that we're going to be seeing coming into the middle portions of the United States over the next couple of days as, it, as the CMEs come into the Earth's atmosphere because we've got three Earth-facing hits that we're going to have. Um, and plus, you know, all the residue from the 17 other uh, waves that this could intensify. And so it's possible that the intensity of the storm that we're going to be having in the United States could actually be uh, uh not being forecasted as being strong enough. It is possible. And so that's something we're going to have to uh, keep an eye on as we go forward. And so uh, let's transition real quick from right now into checking out what our earthquakes uh, are doing. All right, so here's all the earthquakes that have taken place in the last uh, 24 hours or so. And I know this is a little bit hard to read. Uh, but let's, I'll try to pick out some of the big ones. Well, of course, we had one in Mexico and off the coast of Mishinka, Mishinskin, uh, Mexico, 5.5. We have 3.9 in uh, Calbra, Philippines. Uh, let's see, 4.4 in Japan, 4.6 in Japan, 4.4 in Nasha, Japan. We had a 4.2 in Hiroshima, uh, Japan. We had a 4.3 in uh, Porto Cosma. Peru, 2.2 uh, .2 in the volcano of Hawaii, 2.3 uh, in Port Graham, Alaska, 3.5 in Hawaii, uh, let's see, 2.5 Hawaii, 2.8 Hawaii, 2.5 uh, Alaska, 3. Point, I'm sorry, 4.3 in uh, Sardon Sard Sardinia, Greece, 2.2 uh, .2 in Puerto Rico, we have a 3.7 in Dominican Republic, 4.4 in Taiwan, 3.0 in South Australia, 4.5 in Indonesia, 5.2 in uh, New Caldera or Calonia, sorry, New Calonia, uh, 2.3 in Puerto Rico, 2.3 Wyoming. 2.7 Western Texas, 2.6 Yellowstone National Park, 
uh, 2.9 Texas, 2.7 Idaho, 1.3 Yellowstone, 1.4 Yellowstone, 1.5 Yellowstone, 1.3 Yellowstone. Uh, so you, we got Yellowstone going off. We got a 1.1 in Geysers, California, 3.2 in Puerto Rico. Um, let's keep looking in here. We're still into today's uh, 2.2 Stanley, Stanley, Idaho, uh, 2.0 Hawaii, 1.3 Alaska, 2.2 Puerto Rico, uh, 2.4 Texas. Uh, we have 1.0 Utah. Um, so it looks like today we, uh, we're starting to see some rumblings out of Yellowstone that is happening. And so we need to keep an eye on that. We have a 4.7 in the India region, uh, 3.6 in Dominican Republic, uh, 4.3 in Indonesia, uh, 4.6 in Taiwan, 4.6 in Fiji. Uh, so these are all today. 2.0 Montana, 4.4 in Panama, 5.4 in Honduras. So we see Central America is popping off today. 4.4 in the Philippines. We have uh, 2.8 in Texas, 4.6 in Japan. And that continues to keep going. And so that's a lot of the earthquakes that we have going on uh, today. Let me switch our camera view real quick. Exit out of this program. And so that's the list of earthquakes. So let's go into the globe and take a look at what we got going on here. And this is our globe of spinning as fast as it can and very busy, by the way. Shift this mic down. Here we go. And so let's kind of stop it, take it over to the United States. And so this particular graph, as I've mentioned before, does not show earthquakes less than 2.0. That's why we brought up the list a minute ago so we can kind of get an idea what some of those micro earthquakes are doing. But the globe is busy. It's been a busy seven days. And so let's get started here in the United States. Uh, we see we had that 2.5 in Tennessee that took place earlier in the week. Oklahoma with 3.3. Uh, we've got earthquakes here going on in West Texas. We read some of those out already. Uh, here's those earthquakes around Yellowstone and in Idaho um, that we read out around Stanley and things taking place around Yellowstone. We read those out already. Uh, we got the earthquakes in California that have taken place. We read those. We got the 5.1 that's off the coast of Oregon um, that took place. When did that take place, by the way? Uh, that took place yesterday. And so that's a pretty substantial earthquake to take place up there. So we're already beginning to see uh, pressure building in from those CMEs. Alaska, we read some of those earthquakes already that have taken place through Alaska. Um, let's go here into, uh, let's see, we got a lot going on out here. So let's take a look. Uh, this 4.6, this is Japan. Uh, we had several fours that came out of Japan. We had this 5.7 in Nami, Japan that took place uh, just a few days ago. So a lot of this is still at residue and aftershocks from that. Uh, 5.1 here in the Philippines. Uh, we've got a lot of activity. We read some of those uh, just a minute ago, but we got a lot of fours and fives here. And here's the thing is a lot of these earthquakes, we're still reeling from the, uh, from the sixes and sevens we had last week uh, out here. We're still getting... Um, aftershocks after that and now we've got new pressure um that has come in from a cme that already hit us this week and now we got more coming in on top of that this is why this is going to be a very tough week coming up for earthquakes here's that 6.0 uh here in the ventu islands and so we got that six and all the aftershocks associated with that here's that uh 3.0 that we read just a minute ago from australia not too, too often that we get an earthquake out of australia this is kind of unusual to see that uh but there you see it on the map right there right on the coast australia 3.0 um so that's kind of a new one for us to be um reporting but like i said guys uh we're still dealing with the pressure from the big earthquakes we had last week, plus the CME that came in earlier this week. Um, and now we've got 
three CMEs plus all these, you know, we're going to catch the tail end a little bit of, of these flares that the sun brought off, which we showed you at the beginning. You saw the, the video of that. And we read to you what's going to happen. And so there's a lot of pressure that's going to be in the earth and it's going to get stacked on top of each other. And so this is why we're very concerned, uh, especially right here, if anywhere along the Pacific plate that we could see a substantial earthquake. And we're talking like an 8.0. It wouldn't shock me if we saw a 9.0 uh, somewhere in here. And it could be multiple earthquakes in this area. And so uh, I would just say earthquake warning, guys, over the next uh, 48 hours to 72 hours, we're going to see a lot of movements, um, a lot of movement, a lot of pressure on the plates. And so if, there, if there's plates that are already weak, uh, say like, um, you know, we've already got some activity here right off the coast of the United States. And now we have all this pressure coming. This could be an issue right here. Uh, California could have an issue this week. It's possible. I'm not giving a time frame. I'm just saying it's possible. Uh, we could see more activity here in Central America. Look at this. This is that 5. Point, that 5.4. I told you guys about Honduras. There it is. Right there, okay. Here's a 5.1 in Haiti. Okay, we got all these earthquakes have expanded like crazy since last week, and so this is that pressure I told you guys about last week that it would come across. It's starting to come across here, but we got way more that's moving in and more coming in from the activity on the sun, and so this is going to be very volatile in this area. But with lots of twos, lots of threes uh, popping off here in uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and going into the U.S. Virgin Islands out here. Then we go down into the Coast Coast Plate. We had that 5.3. I told you guys last week that we would get something close to a 6 over here. That did happen um, uh, with the 5.3 here in Ecuador. Um, I told you guys we would, part, we would see some uh, activity over here this week, and that's because we had those 6s. Anytime we get these sixes that pop off out here, it shoots up here and then it hits down here. Okay. And it just reverberates again. And so, uh, it's, uh, my anticipation is we're going to have a major earthquake somewhere in this region here uh, with this 5.2 here in uh, Caledonia. Uh, we have a 4. Point, I mean a 5.5 here in Tonga, so we could see some action here in the Tonga region. We can see some volcanic action here um, in Indonesia. That wouldn't surprise me if we get some volcanic action here in Indonesia coming up this week. I think we're going to have a lot of volcanic action as uh, we're expecting a lot of pressure on the plates coming up. And so, very intense week coming up. As you can clearly see... Um, we're already, like I said, I mean, I can't even re reiterate this anymore. We already have so much pressure, uh, and there's really no relief from the pressure that's coming. It's going to keep coming as we are seeing an unusual amount of activity uh, from the sun. Like I said, uh, you know, we had 17 emissions last night uh, off the sun. Three of them are CMEs uh, we are, that will be Earth-facing. Those will begin to affect us starting on March 31st and April 1st. And so as these begin to come in, um, you know, expect a pressure, uh, an extreme amount of pressure to build up. Expect some issues with um, the magnetic sphere uh, across the globe. It's very possible that as, you know, when the first system comes in, it weakens it. The next system comes in right behind it. You've already got a weakened and shocked um, uh magnetosphere. We could see some interruptions in power grids. We can see some interruptions in telecommunications uh, with satellites and things like that. There could be a lot of disruptions uh, across the globe. And I don't know, you know, I don't know which area, which country. I can't tell you that. I'm not that advanced in this. Uh, but what I can tell you is we've already begun to see uh, radio blackouts here. And this thing's not letting here in Africa. And that's already begun, and we haven't even seen the strong stuff come through yet, okay? So we need to be careful uh, with what happens. Um, you know, make sure that you guys are aware uh, that the next few days, if you live in an earthquake-prone area, if you live in an area uh, for some of our viewers that are in the islands down here, 
here in uh, the Caribbean, if you live in the islands here in uh, Indonesia, the Philippines, up here uh, in Alaska, any area that has volcanoes, please be advised. Hawaii, can't leave you guys out. Um, Hawaii, you probably need to be concerned about tsunamis as well. Uh, just be advised that in the ne these next few days, we are on a high alert for earthquakes. We're on a high alert, excuse me, for volcanoes. And we're on a high alert for tsunamis. So basically, if we're going to have a major uh, event, uh, if we're going to have a major catastrophic uh, uh, natural disaster uh, on a global scale, it would be in the next 48 hours to three days. This event would take place at this time, um, you know, with all this stuff coming from the sun. And who's to say that we won't get any more emissions over the next few days? We have a lot of sunspots. I showed you guys on uh, spaceweather.com. There's seven different sunspots right now uh, that are that are spewing, and so uh, this could be the beginning of a, of a active period for a while. But just be advised. Don't be fearful. We don't need to be fearful of these things uh, that are coming upon the earth. We know that this was coming. Um, Matthew 24, Luke 21 tells us of these things that will be upon us, and so do not be worried about that. Uh, but just be advised. Um, we got things that are happening. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you got what you need. Make sure you do a double check. This is a great time, by the way. Uh, maybe you haven't done your seasonal preparation, especially for those of you that live in Tornado Alley here in the United States, which we're about to get into the weather here in just a second because that's the next thing we got to concern ourselves with. Uh, maybe if you haven't done those things, maybe uh, some of you, like you live on the Gulf Coast, you guys get kind of ready for your, the hurricane season. Maybe you should prepare a little early this year. Uh, this is a good time right now to maybe uh, make sure that you have flashlights, you got batteries, make sure you have uh, several days of food, make sure you have, uh, you know, uh, bug out bags if you need to evacuate or get out of your area. Uh, make sure that you have your cell phones charged up, any devices that you need for communications. Uh, make sure you have all those things done because we have a variety of issues that we're going to be dealing with uh, over the next few days. And so it's a guarantee um, it, 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 I mean, I hate to say this, uh, and I'm not speaking because I have lack in faith or anything like that. Uh, it's just that when you see things coming, you need to warn the people and give people a chance to prepare. And it's a guarantee, uh, over the next few days that we, uh, we're going to have a, an issue. Somebody out there is going to have an issue with either earthquake, with a volcano, uh, Lord forbid a tsunami. And then we have this tornado outbreak that we're expecting here in the United States, which I have a feeling is going to be mag magnified even more than what's currently forecasted, uh, just because uh, meteorologists are beginning to uh, figure out there's a correlation between the intensity of the storms during periods of high solar output, like flares, CMEs, X class, things like that. And we're kind of, we just, um, we just kind of have the scenario and the probability of a, 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 we call that a uh, massive storm event. Okay. Uh, it's just, everything is just kind of there for kind of like the storm of the century type thing. Uh, it's there. And so uh, with no further ado, let's check out what we got coming up here in our weather. All right, here we go. So this is our current map right here of the uh, Upper jet streams, this is courtesy of classic.nullschool.net. You can go to the website at classic.nullschool.net, and you can follow along uh, with what we're doing. We're not going to do um, – usually we kind of look at the poles and things like that in the equator. We're not going to do that today. I want to focus mainly just here at home uh, in the United States, pr primarily the lower 48, because, as you can already see, we have a trough that is moving in. Uh, across the west. This is diving down into uh, Wyoming and going points southward. And then we have a trough that's moving out of the east as we speak right now and a ridge that is moving in overhead. And this is going to be a quite, a, quite a quick transition uh, for those of us that live in the northeast. We've been having some record cold uh, last couple days. I know temperatures locally here have been in the teens the last two nights. Yesterday, we didn't even get above freezing, um, and that's pretty late in the year for to have that kind of cold. 
not unusual to get below freezing at night, at least. Uh, that, that can continue all the way till early May uh, this far north. But to have a continuous freeze like that is a little unusual. Uh, but we did have that. And now we're going to switch. Uh, tomorrow we're expecting temperatures to hit near 60 degrees as the trough begins to move in. Uh, we also are expecting to have temperatures... Um, to these warm temperatures to continue pretty far north. At the same time, we have a a snow storm and an ice storm event that will take place in the northern portions of the northern plains uh, going into tonight, into tomorrow. As this trough is that's out west begins to dig southward, and this is it right here. This is that trough. You see where that blue area is? That's the low-pressure system. Uh, that's the trough that's digging in, and then ahead of it, is the warm air that's advancing across the southern and mid plains into that'll begin to make its way into the Great Lakes and northeast overnight tonight and into tomorrow. One of the issues that's going to be taking place is the wind, which is taking place right now across, um, the, uh, I would say, New Mexico, southern portions of Arizona, going into Texas, Oklahoma. Uh, you are probably having a significant wind day today, and that's going to transition for you guys into some potential severe thunderstorms tonight for Oklahoma, for uh, Texas, and uh, portions of Kansas. Now, like I said, this has shifted a little further southward than what I projected last week. It's digging a little bit further southward uh, than we had realized. This is this storm we kind of figured would be more central of the U.S., but that has shifted eastward. So what's going to happen now as, as storms are going to fire up tonight um, across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, um, and we could see some uh, tornadoes. We could definitely see some large hail and damaging winds uh, out of this storm, but that's going to be tonight. And so the, uh, the intensity for you guys has dropped a little bit. Uh, doesn't mean that you won't get some bad weather, but it's dropping a little bit. Now, the problem is, is tomorrow, as we go, as this storm transitions across uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and uh possibly uh, Missouri and those areas, uh, you're kind of in the sweet spot, especially if you're in Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi, Alabama, once again, Alabama, I think you're going to get the worst, uh, maybe not so much tomorrow though, but, uh, miss, but for sure the sweet spot looks to be uh, the three-state region of Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi. And the reason why I say that is because this storm will be, you, right now you're warming up. You've got the southerly flow coming. You've got plenty of time for moisture to make its way in. You've got plenty of time uh, to get nice and warm and humid down here. Also, uh, it'll be during the day when these storms come in. So you're at maximum heating time uh, across these areas, which is, uh, the best, is the best time to get some supercell thunderstorms. Also, like we said earlier, um, going, in, going into the 30th, 31st, we're going to start seeing those CMEs from the sun begin to interact with these storm systems here on the globe. And that can also bring forth an intensification as we go in over the overnight hours uh, into the 30th and 31st. And that overnight hour would, uh, would put us, ooh, I zoomed in too much, going into Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia, uh, if that would be um, going into the 31st on that one. And so very significant storm, uh, storm season or a storm system coming in. Uh, a lot of tornadoes are expected with this. And this could go a little bit further northward as well, too. We could see uh, areas off to the north getting in on this um, as well. Uh, we could see... Uh, the Carolinas getting in on this. We could see Kentucky getting in on some of this. It's possible uh, that this could make its way into the Virginias. Um, and maybe, uh, you know, it just depends on how this thing pivots as the storm begins to make makes its journey, uh, makes that turn to the northeast a little bit. Depends on how far north it goes. But we could even see some uh, activity uh, around St. Louis going into maybe the southern portions of uh, Indiana and Ohio. It just depends on how this thing pivots and just how and how everything comes together. But for sure, we are going to see some activity on the Gulf Coast uh, tomorrow. Tonight, this is going to be a Texas issue. It's going to be a uh, Oklahoma issue. It's going to be a Kansas issue. Okay, and so we've already. I'll show you guys here in just a minute. We've already beginning to start. We're already beginning to see those storms pop up. 
and we're already beginning to see those uh, waves in the atmosphere of the moisture beginning to activate and uh, we'll show you that here in just a moment and so I would like to tell you that after this storm passes that we're going to catch a break but I'm already seeing uh, another pattern coming up and it's already here um, and I'll, if you just look here at this map okay that blue area like I showed you already that is the trough that's digging in if you come over here to like where Seattle and Vancouver is um, where the green the green color pushes northward that's a ridge okay that's a ridge it's over that area and then once you get off away from that ridge you see this blue area right here in the Gulf of Alaska that's another trough that is going to be digging in to the United States after this storm passes. Right behind it is another one, and you can already see that this is yet another dynamic storm that's coming in. And so we were going to be we're going to be dealing with yet another severe weather outbreak uh, next week. And it does look like and when I when you uh, kind of zoom out here that this one uh, could be uh, this one could affect areas a little further north. Than the current one here is, but like like I said last week, and I'm going to say it again this week, things can change in the atmosphere very quickly. You could get a shift, and just like we did with this current storm, the, sh the shift did take it a little further southward. Unfortunately, it's going to affect kind of the same areas that got hit last week with tornadoes. They're going to get it again. Fortunately for you in Texas, I think it will be a little bit weaker than what we saw last week. But for those of you that are in Louisiana. Uh, Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, along the Gulf Coast states, uh, you're kind of in the sweet spot for getting a, a severe outbreak, for getting some really big tornadoes. And unfortunately, um, for those of you that get affected by on uh, get affected by this storm going into the overnight hours of March 30th into March 31st, um, you could definitely be looking at getting. Uh, the, the brunt of it as we get the introduction of those CMEs that will be coming in to the atmosphere that could actually potentially, I'm saying potentially because if the science isn't quite uh, on, the science hasn't been quite figured out on how CMEs and X flares and things that come from the sun, how they affect um, storm systems so much. But the hypothesis of this is that it does uh, intensify uh, storms. We kind of saw that over the winter, over the, this last winter, with certain storms that came through uh, when they're in the midst of a CME outbreak. Uh, that we saw that storms went through an intensification process during that time, and so it's very possible we could see that as well as everything begins to get compressed and as we get pressure in the atmosphere, we could see these storms react to not just the daytime heating or the moisture or the mixing of the air masses uh, or wind or anything like that, but we could also see it interact with what's coming in this weekend from the sun. And so this is why it can be very dangerous. Um, and let me, let me pull up this other graph for you guys so I, I can break it down for you a little bit better. Uh, we'll pull this over here. Let me disconnect this map because I'm not going back to it. Uh, Let's pull this up for you guys. Okay, here we are. All right, so we got... Um, so let's take a look. I'm getting distracted. Okay, so here's, here's Louisiana, Arkansas, right here. And we have Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee up here. So as these storms come across tomorrow, they're going to come out of Texas. They're going to hit Louisiana, Arkansas. It's going to probably look like a bow like this uh, coming across. But uh, it'll hit these areas. It's going to hit this area right here in the sweet spot right at the maximum daytime heating uh, times tomorrow. So this is going to be all red and a lot of warnings, things like that uh, going into tomorrow. As we get into tomorrow night, this is going to transition into Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, it's possible we could get... Tennessee involved in some of this as well as in getting into tomorrow night it may maintain the strength due to the CMEs that will be coming in tomorrow night and especially on the 31st as it transitions over here into Georgia South and North Carolina and it could go a little further up as well uh, just depending on how that storm pivots and then Florida uh, could also be be in the mix of this as well. And so um, a lot taking place here, a very dangerous storm uh, to happen. And 
you're not out of the woods up here either. Um, you know, if this thing pivots a little further north, which it's, it, there's a possibility it could, we could see some pretty big storms here across Kentucky going into uh, Missouri, uh, southern Illinois, uh, Indiana, Ohio. If, if this thing could reach that far north. The storm we had last week kind of surprised us a little bit, and it, it, it reached all the way into southern Michigan uh, last week, and we were nobody was projecting that that was going to happen. And so that's why I'm saying it is possibility um, that some of these areas up here could see that. So let's come over here to the radar. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in. And as you can already see, We've already are beginning to see thunderstorms are beginning to pop off here. What state am I in? Uh, this is the Kansas radar. Uh, Kansas City, or not Kansas City, I'm sorry. This is, looks to be um, Dodge City. Here we go. Dodge City radar right here. And we're already beginning to start seeing those thunderstorms are beginning to pop up. You can see the, rid the bands of moisture in the air. And then as we go here, you can see these bands. These are coming out of the south. Uh, when these, when we start getting these bands that come in out of the south and they begin to meet up with what's coming in out of the west, uh, that gives it that rotation that it needs. So these storms kind of start coming up like this. And then these storms meet up here and they rotate like this. And so uh, let me see if I can actually, oh, I can draw. This is going to be fun. Okay. So these storms will come up like this out of the south and as these storms meet up right here this is where you kind of get the turning right in this region and that's where you can start getting tornadoes all right and so they call it the comma uh, effect and so you just have to uh, be careful when you start seeing that we're beginning to see that process build now and that's a we're at two o'clock in the afternoon and so this could explode here in the next uh, few hours of course you guys will be viewing this this evening and it'll probably be done and over with uh, for you guys here in wichita uh let's zoom back out and let's see what we got going on here we have a weather alert here and uh, blowing dust and sand so we got some blowing dirt taking place here in uh, Oklahoma right now. So that just shows you how windy it is and which we showed you on that graph um, on the jet streams. Everything was blowing really hard here. And so we're getting a report of blowing dust and sand. That's how strong those winds are blowing. And so we already have that going on. Um, let me see if I can pull another radar. Uh, let's see, show radar buttons, here we go. Let's see. I thought we had something out of Texas earlier, I thought. Here we go. Let's scan in. Same thing here in Texas. We're already beginning to start getting some thunderstorms. Uh, they're beginning to fire up right here just outside of Amarillo. That's beginning to start up. Uh, we're not seeing anything yet coming in out of the south. Remember, if we start seeing uh, moisture, we start seeing storms coming out of the south, and if it interacts, with anything coming out of the west, um, that's when you'll start getting your thunderstorm, your tornado rotations in that area. So uh, fortunately at this moment, we're not seeing that just yet, but that could change. Let me change over to the Oklahoma City radar real quick and maybe and see um, if we get into that yet. Uh, show that radar, here we are. Here's the Oklahoma City radar. Uh, and so, so we're seeing it across the Dallas-Fort Worth area already. And this is kind of, this is what we're talking about. We're seeing some activity here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's moving up this way, all right? And the storms are going to be coming this way out of Amarillo because we saw that storms popping up over in Amarillo in Kansas. And so uh, we can already determine that we're going to have enough shear and enough twist in the atmosphere to give us tornadoes in this region later tonight, all right? And so I just wanted to show you guys what that looks like. I know last week I tried to uh, uh, to talk about that, but I don't think people were understanding very well what I meant by that. And so I hope that better explains things, uh, you know, that whenever these storm systems come across, that uh, what forms the tornadoes is when you get this moisture like this to start coming out ahead of the, the line 
and you start getting your line that comes up this way, that it mixes the air right in here. It mixes the air, and that's what forms tornadoes along that line. All right, and so we're already beginning to see the twisting and turning in the upper atmosphere. And so it's going to be a uh, interesting evening here across Oklahoma and uh, Texas tonight. But like I said, I think the worst of and uh, looks like Kansas is going to get into it too here in a little bit. Uh, but like I said, I think the worst of it is going to be here in Louisiana and Arkansas and uh, points eastward as we go over the next 48 hours. And so, so uh, a lot to contend with there. Um, I hope you guys like the demonstration with that. Some new stuff we got going on here on the channel. But yeah, tonight, this has been a special broadcast for everyone. And uh, I want to take you guys over to the FEMA website and just kind of review some safety tips uh, with everyone. All right, this is off of uh, the FEMA website. This is uh, uh, some tornado procedures, guys. Just if you guys experience those over the next few days, just a few things to remember as you're making your plans. Uh, if you are under a tornado warning, seek shelter immediately. If the structure, AE, uh, residence, small building, school, nursing home, hospital, factory, shopping center, high rise building, go to a pre designed shelter area, such as a safe room, basement, storm cellar, or lowest uh, building level. If there's no basement, go to the center of the interior on the lowest level, closet, hallway. Uh, away from corners, windows, doors, or outside walls. Put as many walls as uh, possible between you and the outside. Get under a sturdy table and use your arms to protect your head and neck. Do not open windows. If you're in a vehicle, trailer, or mobile home, get out immediately. Go to the lowest level of a sturdy nearby or storm shelter mobile homes. Even if tied down, offer little protection from tornadoes. Uh, if outside with no shelter, lie in a flat nearby ditch or depress, uh, depression and cover your head with your hands. Be aware of potential for flooding. Uh, do not get under an underpass or bridge. You are safer in a low flat location. Never try to outrun a tornado in an urban or congestion areas in a car or truck. Instead, leave the vehicle immediately and find shelter. Uh, watch out for flying debris. Flying debris from tornado causes the most fatalities and injuries. And so, uh, of course, the information is taken down from FEMA.gov. And so uh, make sure you guys are checking that out. I also want to take a look real quick at um, earthquake uh, tips as well for you guys. All right, here we go. So this is actually from .gov. Uh, a couple of things you can do to prepare for these earthquakes. So those of you guys that live in earthquake-prone areas, of course, practice adopt the drop cover and hold on uh, with your family and coworkers. May, um, those of you guys who live in those areas, uh, you know the drill about uh, being able to make sure that you're covered, that you're in – uh, and a doorway uh, area, things like that. Uh, make sure that you have an emergency plan. Uh, create a family emergency communications plan that, that has a out-of-state contact, plans where you can meet, you get separated, make a supply kit uh, that includes enough food and water for several days and a flashlight, fire extinguishers, uh, whistles, things like that, which we talked about at the beginning of this broadcast. Uh, being prepared allows you to avoid unnecessary excursions to the address of minor medical issues at home, alleviating the burden on urgent care centers and hospitals. Remember that not, not everyone can afford by responding by stocking up on necessities. Uh, for those who can't afford to make essential purchases and slowly build up supplies, um, protect your home, secure any heavy items in your home, like bookcases, refrigerators, water heaters, and televisions, objects hanging on the wall, uh, store heavy and breakable objects on low shelves. So if you have anything that's heavy, uh, that's on your walls, you might want to take those down. Uh, if you have anything that's breakable, let you cherish, you might want to put those on a low floor somewhere. Uh, consider making improvements to your building, fix infrastructure issues that could cause your building to collapse during an earthquake. Consider obtaining an earthquake insurance policy if your area has it. Most areas don't have those, by the way. Um, if an earthquake happens, protect yourself right away. If you're in a car, pull over and stop. Set your parking brake. If you're in bed, fa turn face down. Cover your head with your neck and pillow. Uh, if you're outdoors, stay outdoors away from buildings. If you're inside, stay and do not run outside and avoid doorways. And so you have an, here you go. Uh, if you're in an earthquake, first thing, drop 
or a lock, whatever you're doing, uh, drop to your hands and knees, hold on to something sturdy. If you're using a wheelchair or a walker with a seat, make sure that your wheels are locked and maintained seated until the shaking stops. Cover your number two, cover your head and neck with your arms. If a sturdy table or desk is nearby, crawl underneath it. For shelter, if no shelter is nearby, crawl on an existing uh, interior wallway. Away from windows, crawl only if you can reach better a better cover without going through an area with more debris. Stay on your knees or bent over to protect vital organs. All right. Number three, hold on if you're on under a table or a desk. Hold on to one. Hold on with one hand and be ready to move uh, with it if it if it moves. Or I'm sorry. If seated, unable to drop to the floor, bend over, cover your head and your arms, and hold onto your neck with both hands. And so uh, make sure you guys are checking out uh, these safety tips. Just be ready, okay? Uh, be ready. Uh, you know, be, be advised that when these earthquakes are over in these areas, uh, there could be a lot of serious hazards, such as damage to buildings, leaking gas, water lines, or downed uh, power lines, okay? And uh, just be ready for uh, disturbances and uh, essential services and things of that nature. All right, so uh, we have that. While we're talking about earthquakes, we can't forget its cousin that comes with earthquakes, and that is tsunami. So uh, going over a couple things real quick for tsunamis. For those of you guys who live in those tsunami-prepared areas, of course, be prepared for a tsunami. A tsunami is a series of enormous ocean waves caused by an earthquake, underwater landslides, volcanic eruptions, or asteroids. That's interesting. They put asteroids in that one, isn't it? Um, quick facts. Travels at 20 to 30 miles per hour with waves at uh, 10 to 100 feet high causes flooding and creates problems with transportation, power, communications, and drinking water. Uh, can happen anywhere along the U.S. coastlines, coasts that border the Pacific Ocean or Key Caribbean have the greatest risk. All right. Um, Word to know. Inland, away from the coast. Uh, seismic sea waves, another way to describe uh, tsunamis, elevation, uh, leaving the area that has been un declared unsafe. Debris is, rub is rubble, trash, random materials like uh, pieces of wood, metal, or plastics. Uh, protect yourself. Protect yourself. Key messages. If you're under a tornado warning, drop. I'm not tornado warning. I'm sorry. If you're under a tsunami warning, drop cover and hold on. If caused by an earthquake, drop cover, hold on. To protect yourself from the earthquake first, get to higher ground as far inland as possible. Uh, be alert to signs of tsunamis such as sudden rise or drainage of ocean waters. Listen to emergency information and alerts. Evacuate. Do not wait. Leave when you see any natural signs of a tsunami or hear an official tsunami warning. Uh, if you are in a boat, go out to sea. All right. So if you're in a boat, go out to sea. That means don't come inwards. If you're already out there, just go a little further out because those waves will actually go underneath you. Uh, you're, you'll be safer out in that area. Um, protect Future protective actions, the elevation and distance that you and your property are from the ocean, as well known as a tsunami induction zone, are important for safety and evacuation purposes. Uh, you should first protect yourself from the earthquake when the shaking stops. Move inland to higher ground. Listen for official evacuation notice if an evacuation order is given. Evacuate immediately. Use local alerts and warning systems to get information and expert informed advice as soon as available and follow guidance. All right. And so, uh, uh, tsunami impacts. Tsunamis can cause injuries, death, disruption of power and services and building to damages. A tsunami can occur during any season of the year. A tsunami is a series of waves caused by large and sudden displacement of the ocean. A tsunami can strike anywhere along the U.S. coastline. It includes the Gulf of Mexico, by the way. Uh, just, just putting that out there. And so... Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what they're telling us. You just need to be ready. This is why I told everybody at the very beginning of the broadcast. Make sure you go through all the drills. Those of you that live in earthquake-prone areas, uh, those of you that live uh, 
and tsunami prone areas. Those people live in tornado prone areas because these are going to be the three big deals. Make sure that you go through your emergency preparedness stuff. Make sure you have your gu- uh, your bug out bags ready. Uh, make sure that you guys are doing everything that you need to do to prepare yourselves. And not everybody's going to see this. Uh, you know, let's just, you know, I'll be honest, not everybody is going to see this, but with so much happening over the next several days, uh, there's a very good chance that somebody, uh, is going to endure an earthquake. Uh, somebody, uh, there's a good chance we could see tsunamis this week, uh, with all the pressure coming and definitely with tornadoes, um, you know, that's a very strong possibility. And so just a lot of forces coming together this weekend to make it a very dangerous, um, next, uh, 48 to uh, 72 hours across the United States and really anywhere in a, in a, um, volcanic, anywhere in an earthquake and anywhere in a, uh, tsunami zone all right and so kind of a special broadcast tonight uh just warning everybody letting you know what's happened uh you know if you missed some information you might want to go back through and watch this video again here in the archives and so uh with that being said everyone hey uh we're already about over 50 minutes in tonight we got mike from cot we've got a bible study that's coming on um, from him tonight that will be featured on here at 11 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, so here in about uh, seven minutes or so. So that gives you guys an opportunity to go out and get yourself a cup of coffee if you need to, get yourself some tea. Uh, good opportunity. Hey, you know, um, you know, listen uh, to uh, Mike as he gives us a word from the Lord tonight. Uh, and uh, like I said, this isn't to be fearful. This is not a fear-mongering broadcast tonight. This is not, you know, I'm not saying you need to be scared. You just need to be cautious, okay? You need to be aware uh, there's some activity that's taking place. Our atmosphere is about to produce some things. The sun is acting out. All these things are converging over the next couple of days. And so there is a potential of, uh, of at least one, if not several, natural disaster events over the next couple of days. Uh, we see these things. So I'm warning you as our subscribers to please, uh, if you live in these areas that are prone to tornadoes, you live in these areas that are prone to earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, uh, just make sure you go through your checklists. Make sure you go through your preparedness, things that you normally do every year anyway. Okay. I used to live on the Gulf coast every year. We went through our hurricane preparedness stuff every year. We had bags ready to go. And so this is kind of, uh, a, this is normally what you guys would uh, do in a year anyway, and being prepared for things like this, that would happen. And so, uh, for some of you, you just may need to do it a little earlier than normal, uh, but make sure you're, you're ready. And so if, um, you know, if, uh, on, if, you know, hopefully, uh, Lord forbid that these things do transpire. Um, you're ready. Okay. You need, you're ready to make the move you need to do make, or you're ready to make the move you need to move and you're prepared and you can maybe help others in the process as well. And so we will be praying for everybody, uh, for everyone's safety over the next couple of days, be praying for, um, you know, that God would turn this thing around because it's very possible. It is possible that nothing will happen at all. It is possible. And so um, just be ready ready either way. And most importantly, as I've always stated, make sure you're spiritually ready, okay? Uh, that's number one key to this is make sure that you're spiritually ready, that you're in tune, and that you're ready to go. God will give you the direction that you need. He'll give you the discernment uh, that you need as well to uh, weather the storms and the situations at hand. So with that being said, everyone, hey, make sure you give this video a like, share, thumbs up. Check out all of our links in the descriptions below, everyone. Uh, I'm not going to go through all those tonight, but uh, you can see all of our links. You can see uh, we're uh, Patreon, Rumble, uh, Telegram, uh, and we have a backup channel, Pastor Anthony's channel. Uh, and you can view us tomorrow night at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for Pastor Talk Live. We'll be there, uh, interactive. We'll be praying. And so uh, if you have prayer requests, you can pray with us online or you can submit those online. We'll pray for you live on the air. And that's only on our backup channel. Uh, we don't feature that on Daily Excellent. So with that being said, everyone, have a great evening. God bless you. Be safe. And we will see you guys uh, in just a few minutes here on uh, Daily Excellence with uh, Premier from COT. We are also got premieres lined up uh, for Friday and Saturday. And we're getting ready to upload Sundays here in just a little bit as well. So have a great evening, everyone. God bless you. Bye, everyone.